Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the People Person podcast presented by Good Time Media. I am your host, Wyatt Metzger, and I am joined today by the extremely talented singer-songwriter, Erin Kinsey. This is an important week because her first single, Drunk 2, is coming out Friday, which is the day this is going out, so you can go listen to it right now. So first question to you, Erin, how are you holding up? How are the nerves? First single coming out, big week. Yeah, it's, um, I have been coming back and forth to Nashville literally for, I guess, maybe eight years now, moved here three years ago, and all leading up to like when my first song would hit everywhere. I've never been able to find my music on Spotify yet or Apple Music or iTunes or anything like that. So it's honestly pretty surreal. It kind of doesn't feel real. So it's, it hasn't been too bad yet, just because I think my brain's not processing that this is actually happening. And we're actually like checking that box and moving forward with it. <laughs> so I'm doing okay right now. <laughs> yeah, we can just spend this time just breathing exercises, make yeah. sure we can process it all. It's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like with a song like this is like you put you did all the legwork beforehand and then now you just put it out and you can enjoy putting it out i feel like with like me and like videos and stuff i put it out and then i like critique it a little bit but you've you've put in all the work like this like it's where you want it to be you've had enough time to see it and you're just i feel like are you just ready to put it out there i am i feel like everyone keeps telling me there's going to be this like after prom feeling of like where it's just like okay now what like i don't know what to do with myself anymore which um i would love to have that feeling for a little bit honestly <laughs> but uh yeah i'm really excited to just like get it out to the world and for the whole version to be able to be out like i've been uh playing the same 47 second long clip on tiktok for a really long time so i'm excited for the whole thing to be out <laughs> And so you said you're, you've been back and forth from Nashville. Now you live there now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you go to school at all or are you just full-time rock star now? <laughs> well, when I first got here, I um, was taking college classes through a Nashville State Community College just because it was close and I could do it fully online. And yeah. um, so I was able to kind of spend most of my days just doing music. And um, I think, you know, last spring I took classes during the pandemic and, uh, then I think that fall of 2020, I just decided to go for it. And you always hear all these things about like, if you have a backup plan, like you're more likely to not succeed your first plan. So I was kind of just decided to bite the bullet and just fully go for it, which my parents loved. They loved that. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> my, I'm sure they were thrilled. Yeah, thrilled. Um, my mom has a doctorate in educational research. So okay. So well, yeah, it's tough. Thank you. It's tough to go home and be like, ah, I don't think this education thing's for me, mom. Yeah. So um, luckily my parents are super supportive and super sweet. Um, but I think we were all nervous about taking that step. But I mean, obviously just, you know, the Lord has put things together in such an awesome way, <laughs> but it's been, it's been a crazy ride. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I'm not going to lie. When I reached out to you to do this podcast, I didn't know much about you and yeah. <laughs> holy crap, you have a track record. It's crazy. Wow. I was like, Thanks. I was like, okay, there's more than just this song I saw on TikTok. This is nuts. <laughs> so let's talk like way back in childhood. You always grew up with music. Was music just like your thing? Was it always, I'm, I'm the music person. Well, I always loved music. Um, but I mean, the thing is like, I started to pursue music when I was probably 12. So it's pretty young, but um, most people who are in the music business are like, I, when I was four years old, I knew I was going to do music. It's kind of like professional athletes. Like they never, ever saw themselves doing anything else. And um, again, I started when I was 12, so it's still really young, but I did like, I wanted to be a vet at one point and that I wanted to be in sports at one point and um, went through the thing of like, not really knowing what I loved. And through all of those times, the one thing I loved was sitting in the car with my dad, with my mom, just like jamming out to whatever was on the radio. Um, I was always singing. And I think once I put together that being a singer, being a guitar player, being a writer was an actual career that you could go for. That's when I decided I wanted to do it. Yeah. You're like, oh, I can just do this for a living. Sweet. I might as well try. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and of course, like, I mean, I'm not going to lie, obsessed with Taylor Swift, obsessed with her, obsessed with Miranda Lambert being from a small town east of Dallas. And um, 
wanting to like follow in those footsteps and enjoying the music that they did and then wanting to create my own. So. Yeah. So you're starting at such a young age. You said like, yeah, like I had other passions. I wanted to be a vet. I, were, was there points where there were bumps along the road where you're like, maybe I should have gone that other route. Cause I feel like it's just natural. Like everyone's going to second guess. And like, was there a moment where you're like, crap, this might, this might not work out. Yeah. There's, of course, I mean, like you said, everybody goes through like periods of doubt. And I think my, one of my most recent times of that is I was at home back in Rockwell, Texas, and a lot of my friends from high school was, were hanging out. Um, and I remember they were all talking about their plans for like their life. And they were talking about, oh yeah, like I'm in my third year of college or second year or whatever. And then I'm going to go here and I have an internship set up here. Internships. They always hit you with the internships. Yeah. And I'm like, I, there's not an internship for what I do. <laughs> so they're like, and then I'm going to go work here. And they just had like, like, you know, they talk about your five-year plan mm -hmm. and they had theirs like very, very figured out. And I'm like, I don't know what my next month looks like, like at all. So like, I'm just kind of waiting for things to take off or just, you know, busting my butt as much as I can, just working hard and um, at the will of the music industry, <laughs> but um, and the fans and all of that. But there was a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, like I definitely could have prevented this stress in a lot of ways, but I chose not to. And obviously on a big week like this week, it's easy to be super grateful that I took the jump and mm -hmm. um, am going forward with that. But there's definitely times where I realized what I signed up for. <laughs> yeah. It's you like when you have a big week like this, where like everything's clicking, you're like, all right, this is perfect. But people don't realize like the three months where it's like, I don't, I, you're just second guessing. You're thinking about stuff. It's just like, everyone goes to that, but people see like the one week where it's like, you're, you're at your top. You're, you're having the best yeah. moment. People don't well, see the lows. It's the peak of social media. Like, I mean, it's everybody, no matter what my life looks like, I have at least one cool thing to post about like every couple of days, you know? So yeah, I've had people tell me like, oh my gosh, you look so, so busy. And I'm sometimes I'm like, yeah. And that's not the half of it. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, sure does look that way, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm like, it does look like I'm busy, doesn't it? <laughs> so, um, but I mean, I think that's kind of the thing with an artistic business is there's just really high highs, really low lows. And um, you just ride that wave as it comes. Yeah. You, you kind of mentioned something interesting that I've kind of talked about a little bit. It's this idea of like, when you're in like the arts and you're in an artistic yeah. business, like similar to this podcast, stuff like this, it's, you always feel like, oh, I should be doing something else. So when you're not doing something, like that's how I get, like when I have a couple hours, like I have nothing planned, I'm not doing anything. I like get pissed off. I'm like, I should be doing something. I need to be productive. Yeah. So like, how do you deal with like, obviously we are writing songs, especially like when we were making music, I feel like there's probably a lot of gaps where like you got nothing going on. You're trying to write, you're trying to put songs out, you're trying to do this and that. How do you deal with those times where like, I'm, I don't feel productive right now, but it's just part of the process. Yeah. So with that, that's definitely a thing that comes, like you said, with any artistic business um, and how I kind of view the music industry and what I've kind of learned is the sway is you go from like the creation to the business side, the promotion and all of that, because at the end of the day, like you do have to wear two hats. You have, you get to be the creator and you know, you get to a level sometimes when the business world is taken care of for you, but I am definitely not there. So um, I'm having to put on the hat of like, write the best song I can and wear my heart on my sleeve and like do all of those things and be creative. And I'm also having to be, well, why is that going to mean something? Like, how do I get it to people? How do I try to figure out TikTok, which seems impossible. It's um, all of those things where you just have to wear those two hats. But um I kind of like having the two things to do just because when I'm not being super emotional and <laughs> in my rights or um, writing songs or whatever, um, I can then go to kind of a promotional side and see like, okay, well, what can I put out? That's gonna, I mean, even the cliche things you hear of like push my Instagram engagement or just get the song out to more people or get it to the people who care and all of those things. So it's fun to do that, but also, I have a dog. I have a boyfriend. I have a family. I have friends. Like you have a, you have I, all a life of that, outside of that. Yeah, all of that fills it too. <laughs> yeah. So, 
you spent like how long have you been writing songs like legit writing songs would you say i would say so when i was 12 was probably when i started writing songs and those songs like i just pray to god that no one ever hates me enough to leak those um but i started coming back and forth to nashville when i was in high school so uh i mean a little bit before that but really consistently probably when i was 15 um and i would come once a month and write with people just in the business who were a lot better than me and grew a lot from that but i would probably call myself like a writer full-time when i moved so okay. about three years ago okay and so the, i've had a few like songwriters on here before and it yeah. always interests me because like this idea of like ownership and like people i feel like if i wrote a song and i loved it i would be like this is mine this is my baby i don't want to give it up i don't want anyone else to sing it this is like mm -hmm. how do you deal with that it's like i i wrote this awesome thing or i helped write this awesome thing now someone else is going to go perform it is that how has that yeah. happened that's happened to you right yeah so yeah. i actually um okay first of all Yes, sometimes, like there are definitely songs like I would, it would be really tough for me to give up just because of how close they are to me or specific to my situation on life or whatever. Um, but then there are some that you're not as close with and, um, you know, there's still songs you wrote, there's still things you're proud of. And at the end of the day, like I've written over probably like 400 songs at this point. Jeez. I could never possibly put them all out all of them not all of them deserve to be out it's true yeah. but even like some of my favorites while I continue to write on top of it I could never put all of them out so um I think there's kind of a realization with that but back in October I got the like absolute honor of writing a song with two very well respected uh writers in Nashville we actually wrote it like a year before that but about it was called pink and it was for breast cancer awareness and that's kind of an opportunity where, you know, even though I was close with the song and loved it, the artists got, got put on that song were Dolly Parton, mm -hmm. Monica, I saw that, yep. yeah, it was, it was actually like crazy. I didn't know how, I was very lucky to be in that room with those artists that day and be able to, or the writers that day and um, like be able to be in that emotional state with them and get my hands on that song because it was what happened with it was just insane. Um, but that was kind of a situation where I, I didn't really mind them singing it. I was happy to give it up. That was yeah, did you ever it. meet any of any of the people who actually were on the song, like Dolly or all any of them? Well, because of COVID, it was definitely kind of different. But um, I did get to meet Rita Wilson. And uh, I don't know how like much you know about the country industry. But I love country music. Well. I, okay, I wouldn't okay, say perfect. I'm like in the Nashville no, but like I love country music. So. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So uh, there's the Grand Old Opry here, which is just like a big stamp of like, it's just a huge check mark, like dream come true. It's yeah. something that's been on my bucket list forever. And um, so because of COVID, a lot of like Dolly couldn't come in town because she couldn't travel. And there are other people who are in quarantine or just didn't want to risk it because it was still like a weird, October was still weird. Yeah. Um, so because of that, the Opry let me and Victoria, one of the other writers on it, sing it with Rita Wilson. And so I got to have my Opry debut, which is just like insane to even think that that happened. Um, it was another week kind of like this week. Like it just wasn't really real and yeah. pictures of it, but it doesn't, I don't remember much about it. <laughs> it was yeah, just kind it's, of it's all like a haze. dream. It's like a dream and you're like, did that actually yeah. happen? Or did I just- For real, for real. So, um, I got to make my Opry debut there with her and I met her and she was super sweet. And, uh, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> That's crazy. Like the Grand Ole Opry, like, do your, do your friends like understand like how cool that is? Or are they just well, like, a lot of my friends now are in the music business. Okay. So, um, they do, but even being from a small town in Texas, like everyone knew the country industry and was, everyone was really excited for me. I remember I, uh, went home to vote right after that, like in November. And um, it was cool to like see everybody after I had done that because it's a small town. I knew almost everybody in my grade or in my classes up until probably high school. And um, like they saw me leave town. They saw me going for this dream that seemed really wild. And so it was cool to like see some people back home and then know like how cool that was for sure. You're, you're like a celebrity back, back, back home, right? Kind of. We had some guy go and play like in 
I think he's either in my grade or like the class above me, um, go and play like professional baseball. Hmm. Like, and went straight from high school to professional. So like sometimes like that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's um, okay. He kind of takes probably like the celebrity status in our class, but I mean, everybody's was, again with social media, like everybody yeah. stays up to date with everybody. So it's cool to, it's cool to see. Well, that can be the chip on your shoulder. You're like, I, I need to be more famous than this guy. I need to be the, <laughs> the professional. Guy. Yeah. I'll, I'm working on it. I'm yeah, just, again, again, chip on the shoulder. Keep it going. Yeah. One step closer this week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just compare numbers, everything. Um, yeah. oh my God, I also yeah. saw you opened up for Hunter Hayes. Yes. What, yeah. Walk me through that. How does that happen? That was wild. So I was actually, uh, I was, I guess, about to graduate high school when that happened. And um, it was also for like St. Jude and their big marathon they do every year in Nashville. So it was really crazy because it was not only this super cool experience and at Ascend Amphitheater, which is where the show was, um, I had seen Sam Hunt, which like huge Sam Hunt over there. Like, I absolutely think he is just the coolest. Um, They're moving up ranks in my books because Sam Hunt's up there for me. He is so, I just think he's so cool. And um, I saw him maybe three or four months before that perform at Ascend with Maren Morris opening, which obviously, like, she just got female of the year or female artist of the year at the ACMs last night. Wait a second. I think I saw them on that. Was this like a tour they were doing? Yeah, I think it was called 15 and 30. It was, yeah, I I was, I went when they came to Indianapolis, I was in there. Okay. So it was a crazy tour. It was insane. It was so good. And he like sat up on the stool and like played all of his songs that like Mm -hmm. were cut. Insane. He's just insane. He's he's awesome. He's just a cool dude. (laughs) So cool. I'm like, I just want to be cool like you said. Um, but so to see that, and then go and perform on that same stage. And I'm like, of course, I'm like, I'm breathing, breathing like the same air they did. I'm like in the same dressing room they probably were like totally fangirling. Um, and it was super cool, but also to be opening up for Hunter Hayes, who is just awesome, super yeah. freaking talented. Um, so the whole is he, thing- is he as short as he looks? I don't know how tall he is, but he just looks like he's tiny. He's, he's definitely on the shorter side, but okay. you know, I don't want to degrade him too much, but no, he's, he's I don't short. think it's possible. He's so talented. Yeah. He's just so like he plays. It's just insane. Yeah, he um, played an acoustic show near here that I went and saw. Yeah. He did it with uh, who was that? Uh, Gary Allen. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and then someone else, but yeah, he did an acoustic show. He was he's awesome. He's really good live. He's just insane. Like he's yeah. he's insane. Um, so it was just everything about that show was just. It was so much fun. And it was to like be doing it for St. Jude also. It makes it like such a bigger moment when it's like, this is for something bigger than just like me checking off this box. It's, it's just, it was super, super cool. It's something I will always remember for sure. <laughs> and when you're doing that, are you performing songs you wrote or are you just doing like covers of different songs? So for that show, I think I had like a 25 minute set. So I did one cover and at the end, and uh, it's a song called No Good, and it's by a dude named Kaleo. And I heard that song one time on like the highway on the XM radio um, when Eric Church took over. Like, you know how sometimes on like radios, they'll let like an artist take over and just play all their favorite mm-hmm. stuff. So I heard this song and basically uh, my guitar player and I like came up with this like back and forth, like guitar battling thing. So we ended with that, but everything else was songs that I wrote. So that was a really crazy experience to like be in front of that big of a crowd and be playing songs that I wrote. And some of them had done their research walking in. So they like knew some of the songs. It was, it was, it was really crazy. (laughs) That's cool. I I talked to my friend like last week and I was like, the coolest feeling in the world would have to be if you're like a mega star, like Justin Bieber, like up that at that level and to have like a stadium of people sing a song of yours like when they put the mic out they don't even sing that a stadium of people sing your words back to you that has to be like the coolest feeling in the world like oh, I, I can't imagine. imagine like i yeah. like that's definitely such like a dream of mine and even with tiktok with lip singing being such a part of it 
seeing like these random people from all over the world, like just making these 45 second duets or, you know, using my sound of the song for a song I hadn't put out yet. Like just seeing them, I was like, you actually know the words. Like you actually took the time to learn the words for a song I wrote. Like that's just so it wild. makes it real. It makes it real. It's like, oh, yeah. like, I'm, I'm doing this. Like, people are it, noticing. It makes it insane. Like, I'm like, I can't believe, you know, there's this whole thing of, like, people are so good. And the music industry is so saturated. And all that. You just can't believe that people would take the time to learn, like, your song or to listen to your song. So, it, it's been really crazy. So, knowing how insane that is to me, I actually can't believe, like, a stadium full of thousands and thousands. I, I would, has to be the best. I, would fall over dead, probably. I, know, like, I don't know how I would just like, all right, my career is over. This is done. It's the best moment of all time. You, it you, it be. can't get better than that. It can't. I don't know how it could, but I mean, it's insane. <laughs> so you said you've seen Sam Hunt. You've seen, you've opened up for Hunter Hayes. Before we get into single drunk, uh, drunk two and all that stuff. I want to know who's one person you need to see in concert before you die. Hmm. Well, I'm a huge concert goer. So Okay, so you go to a lot. I well, I mean not anymore, but because <laughs> okay. of you know, there's like a pandemic going this on. This past year doesn't count. Just we'll just yeah, throw it out. Count. But before yeah. that, the concert that I really, really loved was John Mayer. I think he is just like as a guitar player and also as a writer, like he's just on a, a level of his own. Like, I remember there was one part in the concert where he had a trio going and he has this jazz trio he plays with. And I guess they come out on tour with him and they do a little set. Um, and there was one part where I thought for like a split second, I think, I wonder if somebody played a wrong note or something. And literally my, the next thought was, I'm sure whatever music theory that is, is just over my head and I just don't understand it. Like I, there's no way any of them did anything wrong. Yeah. No chance. I was like, it's just something up. I cannot comprehend. And I think he, I think that just says, like, I just, I think he's very good. <laughs> um, so he's, I would love to go to another John Mayer concert because he's okay. just, just so good. All right. So John Mayer, and you're also a big Taylor Swift fan. Oh yeah. So I, I want to ask, I don't, th there's drama between those two, right? I don't know what's yes. going on. I, I'm not in that world. I'm a new you know, Swifty. I will say this. I'm a born okay. again Swifty. This past yeah. summer, I watched the documentary on Disney Plus with yes. uh, Folklore, that album. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm a Swifty after watching this one. Okay. So I'm new to this game. I don't know her history. What Can you explain that to me? What, what went on there with her and John Mayer? From what I understand is more than anything. So they dated or something. Had a thing, really? something. Don't actually know because I feel like there's a really big age gap there. But Yeah, I was going to say, whatever. I feel like he's old. Yeah, he... He's on TikTok now, and you forget how old he is. Like, not that he's so old, but he's older than like 25. You know, he's he looks kind of homeless on TikTok. I've seen him. He's got the big hair everywhere. I was like, ah, John Mayer kind of let himself go. You know, <laughs> we all have. It's cool for quarantine yeah. is a tough time. Um, but it is interesting to see that side of him, I will say. Um, but from what I understand, there's a song called Dear John on the Speak Now album. Okay. And it's pretty obviously about John Mayer. Well, like wait, the guitar, name, wait, the name of it is Dear John? Dear John. Oh, duh, it's about him. No, it's yes. the title. She no, didn't even try to hide that one. No, and she, she doesn't have to because yeah. she's Taylor. She can do whatever <laughs> she's she wants. Taylor. Um, yeah, she can do what she wants. But um, one of the things that I actually found out from a TikTok video is if you listen to the guitar parts in there, they like completely mimic like John Mayer's style, which obviously when that came out, I don't even remember how old I was, but I was not into John Mayer yet. And I, um, when I put that together, my mind was slightly blown. Um, and I, I really don't know all the drama. I've heard some things of like, that he told her that, like she, she co-wrote a lot of songs, which like I co-wrote a lot of songs. A lot of people collaborate, especially now, like just everyone collaborates because you want as many angles for the song and all this stuff. But I guess there was a comment made that um, she, her songs are only good because of like who she writes with and not because of her. And so then- I Taylor like that. Yeah. It's so, like, I'm actually curious. Like I kind of want to look it up. 
but I feel like she then went on and like wrote a ton of songs by herself. Like, Hell yeah. Almost, I want to say a whole album, but I also Hell yes. have never checked. So I'm actually checking currently. That's queen shit, Taylor. She was oh, like, gosh. oh, I don't oh, write yeah. my songs. Let me just write in a whole album. Let me just write away. Yeah. And, no, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing some research currently. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, she wrote, I think, all of Speak Now by herself. Hell yeah. To, like prove it. And that's in my opinion, that is the peak album. That is really? that's the one. That that's is that's the one. one. So um, I went to the concert. I was decked out head to toe, me being probably 12 or whatever at that age. Um, yeah, I, that's, that's the album for me. That's the okay. one. Okay. All right. So very proud that she did that by herself. Yeah. Go Taylor. I'm a Swifty. Go now. her. Exactly. Um, now you are in the scene. You are in the country music scene. You're deep in it. You're living there. Is there someone that's like kind of on the come up, grow like going up. Like, this person's gonna be a star. This person's gonna be big. Besides yourself, of course. But other other than other than you, is there someone you're noticing, or they might have a little attention, but they're gonna be big, or what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I have a ton of friends here that I just think are so talented. There's one girl um, named Janelle Arthur, and she uh, actually has a duet coming out with Dolly Parton soon. <laughs> So that's, you know, pretty good. Um, That's that's all right. I mean, I think, and she's also on American Idol. Like she's just, she's literally one of the sweetest humans. She's so, so talented. Um, And then there's also a guy I'm friends with. His name's Cooper Allen. And he has a ton of TikTok. Oh, that's a TikTok guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, he also like, I was friends with him before he, you know, popped off as they say. Mm -hmm. Um, And he is just like, an amazing performer, an amazing writer, and uh, he works his butt off on TikTok. But he has, I think, two point six or two point seven. He's cra- he's like he's the country music TikToker, and like I kind of like feel bad because it might like people might be like, oh, he's just a TikTok guy. It's like he's legit. Like he can he can write, he can sing. And- no, yeah, he's super talented. Well, and I think he just put out like one TikTok that was uh, saying something about him going on tour and you know, say what you will, say whatever, but if thousands and thousands of people are showing up for your shows, then, like, I don't know what, what more makes somebody legit, so I'm excited for him to be able to go out on tour and, like, show everybody what all of this work he's put into TikTok and building this following and being engaged and all of that, I'm excited for him to be able to put that to use like in a tour and do live yeah. things and all of that. I'm excited I, for him. I that. think the stigma of like, oh, I'm a TikToker or TikTok is like <laughs> it's kind of going out the window recently just because like in a post-COVID world, people are rea- realizing like having this many followers on any platform is going to help you whatever your career is. Like if you're well, trying def- to yeah. put stuff out. Yeah. Well it's there definitely is a stigma with TikTok. And I think it's because um I think it's honestly because no one really knows like how to work it. So it seems like really, I mean, you really are just giving your luck up to the algorithm. Like it is tough. Like Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I posted the video of mine that did uh, like, I mean, I wouldn't say it went viral, but it like got some attention was I posted at like noon and you're like never supposed to post at noon on TikTok. Like it's the worst time to poke or post or whatever. So, um, I think like there are no rules, which make it really intimidating to like the business mm-hmm. side because there's no way to figure it out. But like Cooper has it figured out in my opinion. And again, you can say whatever, like everyone can say whatever they want, but like his song got like a million streams in like three days. And I'm like, those are numbers that don't, I mean, those are really impressive numbers. Yeah. So you can only say so much about it until you have a million streams in three days (laughs) yeah i'm gonna say i think it it pisses a lot of people off tiktok does just because of how quick someone can blow up and because like for me example i was on TikTok or youtube for like three years nothing no no traction whatsoever i was on tiktok for a couple months and like i had a video just blow up in like a million views and i was like wow that, that video this stupid 10 second video about this flavor of skittles has a more views than any YouTube video I put like three years of work into. So I'm like, yeah. there's gotta be something here. So like the numbers don't lie. And there's been a bunch of 
like TikTok songs, as they're calling them, that just blow up. They hit number one on charts. Um, the last one I saw, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Dick Down in Dallas song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that's first of all, it's a banger. Um, yeah. little, little crude, but it is what it is. But yeah, that song was like number one on the charts for like a little bit. And I was like, it's only because of TikTok. TikTokers yeah. thought it was funny. So it's like, it's, well, and, the numbers yeah. don't lie. Well, the thing that I like about TikTok personally, and which I honestly saw like through Drunk 2, was it skips any middlemen. Like if your song is doing well, people are engaging with it, they'll open it up to more people and they'll open it up to more people and see what they think. And you just keep opening up to different audiences. And for me to be able to get my song directly to the girls it would relate with, like that's worth a lot because even on Instagram, like not, I mean, I, some people might, but I don't personally like scroll through like my explore feed a lot. Oh, yeah. or, um, like even the reels, I'm still like trying to remember to like go through those too, but that's kind of the only way to see like new people that you're not following. Mm -hmm. So I think it's cool that you can find people that you never, ever would have seen because you're not following them. Yeah. But it's a gift, like as an artist, it's like I, every video I post has a chance of going out to people who have never seen me before, who have never heard of me, never heard my stuff. And it almost seems like a, like an interview in some ways, like it's your first impression, but being able to, you know, nail the first impressions and is one thing, but also being able to get it and get the mm -hmm. opportunity. That's, you know, a really cool opportunity to get and be able to take advantage of. So yeah, yeah. Huh. that's interesting. Yeah. Cause if you, I mean, if you make good content, it's going to do well. That, I mean, that's just the way, like, I, I believe that's true. If you, if you put out good stuff, it's going to do, it's going yeah. to do well on the app. And then that is interesting. Like it's a first impression because you, it, there's that pressure. Now, every video you put out, this could be the first time someone's seeing you. So mm -hmm. that better be good. That better be a good first impression that they're not going to follow you. Or if they see you down the line, they're going to have that bad taste in their mouth, whatever. If they didn't like your first video. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing with TikTok is it's a lot more like casual but it's uh it's cool to like see the challenge of like you mm -hmm. know what when people see this like i want them to be to want to follow me or i want them to want to go listen to my song or to do whatever the call to action is from like a business point of view um it's cool to just be able to have that challenge because people will see it and you can't always say that for all the platforms so yeah and people will see it and people saw your song and now <laughs> look look where we are yeah so let's let's talk a little bit about that how did drunk Two come to be what was that writing process like yeah so i wrote it with a girl named danielle and a girl named ava and uh it was my second or third ride with danielle and it was my first one with ava and basically i just had somebody really close to me go through a situation the situation of drunk Two. um but there was no alcohol involved <laughs> so basically with their situation what happened is they had been just talking with this guy for a long time and over the summer and it kind of came fall time. And, um, then she got bold, confessed her feelings one night. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I've been feeling the same. And they talked for a while. And then I guess the next day he was like, Hey, I was really like caught up in my emotions and stuff. Like, I don't, I don't really feel the same anymore, which is horrible. Like huh. it's horrible to say something that like you've been wanting to get off your chest that has been building up inside of you to do that, to think it went great. And then be yeah. told that it went like the worst case scenario. And, wait, you said there's no alcohol involved. The guy didn't claim to be drunk. No, no. So I mean, I this guy's a scumbag. Give, this guy's yeah. Scumbag. Yeah. Basically. So I tried to give the guy in the song like a little bit more of a cop. <laughs> Um, and honestly, just to make it make sense, like you have three minutes to not even sometimes to explain a whole situation, like adding alcohol involved just made it make a lot yeah, of it wouldn't make sense because guys don't make sense. Guys like that you know, don't make decisions yeah, guys like, like that. that. Doesn't make sense. Guys are great. Obviously, like I'm dating my boyfriend and I think he's the best. Um, he would never do that. And so, I mean, or I would literally. Or you would write the best song ever I, <laughs> and you would end his life. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? That would definitely be the goal. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that happened. And I walked into this writing session like a couple days later. Um, 
And I was just explaining it. And I had this le- uh, melody idea, um, which I actually still have on my phone from like driving to the session. And it's just like, uh, I, it's basically the first line of the song. It was just, I didn't touch a job from bed by 10 o'clock. And uh, I walked in with that and I was like, I don't know, like, I just feel like we could say this whole thing of like, I'll just say I was drunk too, to like cop out too, because then it makes it not embarrassing anymore. So we wrote the song and um, we wrote it in a couple hours. And I, I don't think we knew how well it would relate to people, but we knew that we liked the song. So mm-hmm. left that. And then that was actually like at the very end of 2019. So then I'm, I'm listening. The holidays happen. At the end of 2019? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay. yeah. Wow. So the end of 2019. And so the holidays happen, which this was like literally probably like a week. We wrote it on 11, 11. It's fine. Just, you know, don't know if that means anything, but it's a lucky song. (laughs) So, um, so then like right after that Thanksgiving happens and then basically the music business shuts down pretty much for the holidays. Like no one does anything. Everyone goes and spends time with their families. If there's any Christmas albums coming out, they were planned like way back in June so everybody goes and enjoys the holidays. So I go and enjoy the holidays. Um, then, uh, you know, the new year starts. I'm thinking about maybe putting out music, going in the studio, and then COVID hits. So everything was basically put on hold. But I knew I had this song that I loved, and I didn't really know what to do with it. I didn't really know what to do with anything because it was COVID. Um, and just kind of sat around for a while and wrote a bunch on zoom because that was where things went after that (laughs) and the song just kept like coming to the back of my mind getting stuck in my head i kept playing it for people and at one point i remember you know a while the whole year goes by and then i guess maybe a month and a little bit back from now I um, was like, you know, this song has been stuck in my head. I've been literally writing songs for a year. I don't know if I have a song I like more than this one or I feel like relates better than this one. So I'm going to put it up on TikTok and see what happens. And then a lot happened. So it was kind of crazy how it shifted so fast, but it proves that like if you just, music is just relating to people. And if you can do that, you know, crazy stuff happens. (laughs) Okay, so you're holding on this song for a long time. Yeah. I like, again, me as an outsider, I'm like, if I have this song, I like, I was like, why could, why don't I just record it, put it out. So this is the first single. What goes into that behind the scenes that people don't understand? Like, why is it so difficult to just to like, not just, Oh, I'm gonna sit down, record it, put it out. Boom. Done. Like what goes on behind the scenes? Well, there's a lot like on the business side that goes on. Like you have to make a Spotify account. You have to get approved for that. You have to make an Apple music account and get approved for that. You have to, you know, go in the studio, book the studio time, pick the song. But what was the biggest thing holding me back is because it was my first song. I like wanted it to be perfect. And there was this whole thing around it. Is I wanted to make sure I picked the right song and that it was everything about it was perfect, which I've found out it will never be like nothing can ever be perfect. Um, but you don't know this at the time. And so sometimes it's easier to just be like, Oh, I just won't put out anything because then you don't have to deal with any of it. Yeah. So I ran into that. (laughs) Um, and there was like, I mean, just being totally blunt, like I have a pretty wholesome brand. So putting out a song called drunk Two brought up questions and obviously are you you 21? No. Okay. (laughs) So the whole song, like if you listen to it for, if you listen to any of the words, if you listen to the first words of the song, it's I didn't touch a drop in bed by 10 o'clock. It's not about drinking. Um, From the girls. From your perspective. Yeah. From the girls singing point of view. Um, And the singer doesn't drink at all in it. Um, But obviously if you're scanning through things, all you're going to see is Aaron Kinsey drunk too. So Mm -hmm. that was, a big concern for oh. like, mostly my team. And I was kind of worried about it, but I, I was like, ah, but I like the song. So um, the one thing that happened when people related to it on TikTok, the biggest thing that happened for me is it was kind of like, you know, all of these girls get it. Like all of these people get it. Also they're relating to it and they're taking the time to like 
comment and engage with me and like go to my Instagram and follow me and DM me. And I'm like, you know, if I have something that is truly relating to these people and is giving them something that they can listen to during a tough time, like who am I to like not give that out? Yeah. So it kind of made all of those worries just be bypassed because at that point it didn't really matter. It was you know, people are asking for it and that's your job as a songwriter, as an artist, as whatever you want to call it, is to relate to people and to say things in music that people don't know how to say. So, you know, all of the political things around it or the branding things, that gets really small when this big box of like, I just want to relate to people is checked off. Mm-hmm. So that was a lot of like the behind the scenes that happened. And then obviously trying to turn around a song and a month was wild. Um, but you know, we got it done. It's out and I'm just excited to, for the world to hear it, you know? Yeah. You can say it's out now. Cause this is, this is going out Friday. You can be like, Hey, I, know. Out, I, I caught myself. I was like, I was going to say it's coming out, but goodness, it would be out by this. Oh, go, stop listening to this podcast. Go listen right now. I know. Get out. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that's interesting, that whole process, because, like, yeah. once that TikTok goes viral, it's like, oh, I'm on the clock now. I got to get yeah. this out. That's, oh, yeah. that's interesting. And I, that's how I found you. I found that TikTok. <laughs> I'm not your target demographic for that song <laughs> at all. I, can, I can't I can even relate to the scum. Hopefully, I can't relate to the scumbag guy yeah. in the song. <laughs> Hopefully. You don't know me that well. Maybe I'm the worst. <laughs> Maybe, oh. but you know, I would never know. <laughs> yeah. But like, again, I just saw that song. I was like, this is a good song. This is a great, like, this is going to do really well. And I was like, oh, I'll reach out, see if she wants to come to the pod and look yeah. where we are now. Um, so this song's coming out. The song is out now. If you're listening, what are you most looking forward to? I know it's a stressful time. I know there's a lot going into this day. What are you looking for? Just be like, all right, I'll take a breath and sit back and relax. I mean, honestly, looking forward to that feeling, but more than anything, I'm really excited to see like all of these girls that wanted me to put it out on TikTok. Like I'm excited to hear like their reactions and see what they think and, you know, hear them relate to it and hear their stories. I'm just really, again, like the whole point of writing songs and being an artist is to get my feelings out there, but also to relate to other people. So that's all this song did. That's the reason it's being put out is because it related to people and people wanted to listen to it while they were going through a tough time or reminiscing on a tough time. So I'm just excited to like see everybody's reactions and just to hear what they think and to meet new people through it and just see what happens. (laughs) And you're probably going to hate me for this question, but after that, what's next? Well, I actually, the next song I'm working on right now, and uh, I'm hoping to be able to put out like a really fun summer song. I have a song I'm super excited about. Um, So kind of going into it, fighting for it, and it's something really personal to me, and I'm just really excited. So um, I'm hoping to be able to put that out in a couple months and be able to let Drunk 2 have its time and let it, you know, be able to hit wherever it's going to hit and get to the people it will, and then go to the next one. So yeah. Awesome. Keep moving along. I, I exactly. like it. Uh, last question I want to ask you is something I ask every single person as the last question, answer it however you want, whatever you feel fit. Uh, what gets you up in the morning? That's, that's a good question. Um, I've said it quite a bit, so it's, it's kind of my thing now. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I will, um, I've, I've got the delivery down too. It's like, if it rolls off the tongue. Nice. Yeah, I know you, you're, you're good. You're good at it. <laughs> um, you know, I think, I think having this dream that I have and knowing that, especially because of social media platforms, because of podcasts, because of anything, being able to go directly to your audience, you don't have to have a record label anymore. Like, to be able to build a fan base and to relate to people and to get your music heard. So I think the thing that gets me up right now is knowing that the only thing that stands in the way of me and my dream is me. And if I put in the time and the effort and put my heart and soul and absolutely everything I do and just work my butt off, like it could happen. And that's really motivating, especially right now, like 
having a song out, it's super motivating, but even the days where there's not as much going on, that's definitely what gets me up. It's the only thing in between me and my goal is me. Well, hell yeah. I love that. Hey, <laughs> the song's out. We can celebrate yeah. through this like 30 seconds as we wrap this up. And then you got to get back to work to get ready for the actual launch. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I want to thank you for coming on. I'm super pumped to listen to The Drunk 2 once it comes out. And I'm thank sure you. I want to encourage everyone who's listening to this, if you haven't heard the song yet, if you haven't stopped the podcast, like I told you to do, first of all, listen to me more. Second of all, go listen to the song right now. But yeah. yeah, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Wyatt. <laughs> yeah, dream girl, dreaming. I be dreaming. I be dreaming. Missing all the days you got me feeling. I said I love you, baby. No, I mean it. Hey, yeah, dream girl. I be dreaming.